Welcome to the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Hour. I'm your host, Rodney Brown. Uh, it's a crazy night out here. We're going to have some great comedians. You know, it's hard doing this show, small budget. So I had to come out here to the theater and cheat a little bit and get the band to play so we have some music to go underneath of it. But I'm not really nervous. That could be me they're applauding for, but I think it's comedians. So let's go to them right now. The Laugh Out Loud Comedy Hour. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, the reason I got divorced is because Hallmark doesn't have a card that says, sorry, I called you the C-word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell some of you ladies right now, you're pulling out the C-word mask. <laughs> you don't know my ex-wife. My ex-wife was a magician. Yeah, poof, half my shit, gone. <laughs> Ever since I've been divorced, I have the same recurring fantasy where I go to a prostitute and she does all the things my ex-wife would never do. <laughs> she asked me that one question, what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> I got a list, you know. <laughs> See that chair right there? I want you to sit down and shut up. <laughs> for an hour, oh, you're turning me on. And don't worry, ladies, that's where the misogyny ends. It's okay. I was a little bitter about it. You know why Steve Martin quit comedy? <coughs> Friday night, second show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me wish I would have taken those hypnotist classes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I drove here today, I got a ticket in Indiana. Yeah, I, uh, I guess they don't like it when you're driving with your knee on the phone and smoking. <laughs> I cut him off, too. I didn't know that it was a cop. They had with that firebird. Have you seen that thing in Indiana? I thought I was getting pulled over by Knight Rider. I was like, Kit, is that you? And the cop, it, it, the, I was going 78 miles an hour. No seat belt, and I cut him off. And I didn't use my turn signal. And I was just laughing about it. I was like, yeah. And? <laughs> And he let me go. I only had the, he gave me the seatbelt ticket. That's it, 25 bucks, no points against my record. Huh? Wow. Yeah. Don't ask me how I did it. How'd you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell some of you are a little sensitive. <laughs> Cattle in here, don't be doing that stuff up there. That's all people are, is cattle. You think you're important, you're not. You, just like <laughs> <laughs> you really aren't, you know? A lot of people, yeah, I got a great job and I got 14 children, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> And you know where it shows its most on its, on its face? Is in a mall. That's where people really turn into cattle. You know, they're walking along, all of a sudden they just stop right in front of you. <laughs> like they're looking around for a salt lick. Come on. <laughs> Move it, Ethel, I gotta get to the store. <laughs> and I live in Minneapolis right now, and that's where they have the Mall of America. Yeah. You been there, huh? No. No? <laughs> yeah, that place is huge. You know they have a store that sells kitchen refrigerator magnets, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, you don't ever see anybody cool in there. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you imagine if you were a Generation Xer walking in there, you know, with all your piercings? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, those little yellow bananas look kick ass. <laughs> and I don't care where you're from or what you do, any mall is the same, and I hate them all for the same reason the parking situations. Yeah, like you think you find a front row spot, you're all excited, you know? Ooh, must have known that's coming. <laughs> look over. <laughs> Nothing but an empty ocean of blue handicap spots. <laughs> yeah, you know what, come on, do they think they're all gonna show up at once? <laughs> do we need enough spots to hold a convention there? <laughs> now some of you are a little sensitive, Murr. Don't be talking about handicap, Murr. <laughs> I don't have anything against handicapped people, I just don't know why they get to park in front. <laughs> Come on, some of them have wheels, they can roll. <laughs> We're gonna segment society in that manner. I think other people should be able to park up front based on their physical limitations, right? Yeah, yeah like the elderly, park up front and give them a spot they don't have to back out of. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Come on, you guys. I don't think there's anything more frightening than realizing you're in Ethel's blind spot. <laughs> Seeing those reverse lights come on, you're like a deer. Shit. <laughs> oh my God, that car's being navigated by knuckles. <laughs> Where's my spot? You know, I want to park up front. I'm a smoker. We're the ones out of shape. <laughs> What would that sign look like? Just a couple of crispy lungs, maybe a tumor hanging off of it. Marlboro written across the top. We could put a NASCAR sticker on the bottom. Call it Redneck Row, huh? I also think midgets should be able to park up front. Yeah, think about it. If a midget has to park in the back of a lot, that's like a 10K for him. This is bullshit. Might be there in a half an hour. I haven't even made it to the handicap box. <laughs> and some people are afraid to laugh at that joke. They're like, oh, that joke's mean. You're making fun of midgets. No, I'm not. That joke is rooted in midget empowerment. Because I feel sorry for them. Think about it. They can work at the carnival, but they can't ride the rides. <laughs> I read an interesting article about two midgets that got married. Makes sense, they shouldn't marry each other, but what made me laugh is that they got married, they had a child, and the child ended up normal size. Come on, that's hilarious. I would love to be that kid growing up, that would rock. Go on and mow the yard, yeah, whatever. I'll tell you what, Dad. You keep talking to me that way, I'm not gonna let you ride my big wheel anymore. See my dad out there as an angry, pissed off midget mowing the yard. You're, you're grounded. <laughs> and I'm sure they're sick of being short, like I'm sick of being tall. You know? I'm 6'4. Yeah, how many people in here are over 6'2 by a round of applause? Where are you? <laughs> you and me, brother. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Go check into a motel, get into a shower. <laughs> yeah, because I refuse to get down on my knees in a shower. <laughs> Fool me once, you know. I uh, lost a friend to vegetarianism. Yeah, I bought a leather jacket, and I'd never owned a leather jacket. And I was showing it to him. I was really proud of it, right? And he lost his mind on it. He was like, dude, that jacket is sick. You know that cow died so you could have that jacket? I was like, no. That cow died because I like a good T-bone. <laughs> this jacket was just the wrapper. Good luck with your corn jacket in January. It's not like I'm walking around in a California condor coat, you know? It's cattle, I eat them like they wronged me. And he has no room to talk either, you know? He's into the body art. He's got so many piercings over his right eye, it looks like he's holding a slinky hostage. <laughs> and he's pissed that I do the joke. He's like, dude, I don't think you realize. I use my body as a canvas. I'm like, hey, you need to put the brush down. <laughs> You've done enough work, you know? And if you're pierced and you're offended, just realize if you have one in your lip, you look like a fishing accident gone awry. 